Hello, welcome pen friends. I had a special request to uh, kind of do a little uh, look-see at this notebook. This is a Dingbats notebook and it is the pocket size, um, I think they call it an A6. Yeah, A6 pocket size. And it came in the July Ink Flight subscription box. So I'm gonna open it up and uh, we'll, you know, we'll just look at it real good and I'll do some uh, pen tests in it. How's that? And so here we go. Let's see. It says thread bound notebook with bare debossing. That is pretty neat. We'll be able to see it better when I get the plastic off. Mine came with lined pages. It has a pocket. 100 GSM coated cream paper. And it has a little vegan symbol there. Huh. Wildlife collection. Okay. And then it says 100% recyclable with a vegan degrade degradable faux leather cover, acid-free fountain pen friendly paper, contour stitching on the cover, expandable pocket, footprint patterned end papers. Oh, we'll look at those when we open it. Bookmark pen holder. I noticed that and that's a good placement too. I have another one where the pen holder's up here and that can keep me from, I can cause trouble anyway. <laughs> okay, on one this size, I like it in the middle. Okay, uh, opens flat, 192 micro perforated pages. Wow, awesome, made in Turkey. Okay, and I went to this website, which I'll link you to. Um, for in the US, you can order these. And uh, anyway, I'll, I'll put a link, but let's get into the notebook. <clears throat> I like these little seam rippers from my sewing kit because I can be a disaster when it comes to opening these things, okay. Let's do that, and then we can get in there and see what, I, it's just such a nice looking notebook. Right away, um, I really would like to save that because I'll never remember the details. So I'll end up with putting that in the back pocket. Oh, it has their little uh, symbol on the back. It's very textured, let me smell it. Hmm, it's not leather, but it makes you feel like it's leather. So <laughs> I guess that's why I wanted to smell it, oh boy. Okay, so that little bear is, is you can feel it, it's, uh, it's recessed or whatever, and I guess that's the word they used. Anyway, it's, it's like cut out of that cover material and you can see his little eye too. So then it has a nice tight elastic band. That is handy, okay. The stitching looks super nice actually. Um, gosh, this is pretty. Um, okay, I found out that they were retailing in U.S. dollars for $14.95, so it's a very expensive little pocket notebook. That probably is what kept me from buying one, but this came in a subscription box that I'd already paid for, so this gets me to looking at it sooner than I would have. Oh, this is nice. It's got that the paw prints in the front. Let's see, anything else? Okay, and that first page that's kind of, you know, attached to that part and then mine is a lined one but I did notice you could get um there was a variety and I wrote it down on another paper gosh lined and dotted and plain there were four types oh and graph so just about anything you could think of you could drop down and and get that <clears throat> so they got everybody covered I guess okay this is really smooth paper and it said that it opened flat <clears throat> Oh yeah, it does. That's nice. That's quite nice. Usually, you know, <laughs> it'll close on you. So that's nice. And that's just a real quick, you saw me, I unpackaged it. Yeah, that's nice. It does lay flat. Oh, it has a paper in the back. Okay, well, that's nice. To tell you more about it, because I mean, oh, good. It has all the, like, history. I saw that on their website, but... Uh, I was really intrigued with that. It's a company that's been around a long time. Okay, there's the types. Lined, here we are right here. Lined, dotted, squared, which would be graph in my book, and then plain. So really cool. Okay, this will be something to save for sure. And then there's the expandable pocket. That's quite nice. Like the Loistrum, like the Moleskins, like those kind of notebooks have. So I, I'm going to put that right in there, and here's the pen loop. Let's see what fits on there. <laughs> okay, time to bring over the fountain pens anyway, because we're going to do a little pen test. 
Well, let's just grab the go. The go is kind of big, though. I don't know about that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> Ooh, boy. Let's try a, a smaller one that would have a better chance. There we go. Okay, so this is a Retro 51, um, which is more normal sized, I guess, than the, uh, <clears throat> the Twisby Go. I would have to fuss and probably knock over my tripod with that one. I might be able to get it on there, but... Okay, so the pen loop is nice. It's nice and tight, and I like the position. I don't like them up here, because then the pen tends to do this number, or, you know. Anyway, the, they, they got that right, I think, so. Okay, let's see about doing some pen tests. That's really what's important, right? Um, I always do that in the back of the book. Oh, one more thing I wanted to point it out to. My friend had already told me the pages are perforated. It's going to be hard to see. But I was curious, are they all perforated? And it looks like they are. Yeah, they are. Okay. So anywhere you are, if you want to rip one out. Now that, that can be good or bad. Actually, I think that can be very good. I probably won't tear them out. But you wouldn't have to mangle the book and ruin the binding and have other pages coming out if you did want to rip a page. So I can see that. I can see why people... Anyway, all the pages are perforated. Oh, bookmark, which is trying to get my attention like, hello, I'm here. Show them that there's a bookmark. <laughs> okay. Nice black bookmark in mine. Mine had the bear, of course, on the front. And there's all kinds of different colors and animals that are featured. So, all right, let's get that Retro 51 back out. The reason being, it's got uh, a stub nib on it. So I want to see right away whether this paper... I mean, this this is a pretty good test of that. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll write pen test with something else, though. <laughs> pen test. Okay. This is one of the Tombow Fudin, Fudinosaki. Okay, I don't know how to say that. It's, it's neat. They're brush pens <clears throat> that were gifted to me. And that, those are really nice. So let's go ahead and just put, okay, this is retro 51. One point one millimeter stub. And I got Roar and Klinger Casia in here. Okay, when I get done, uh, we will flip it over. I'm going to try a few more pens. Um, okay, I've got a broad nib in this one. This is the Lamy Safari. <clears throat> so we'll put that next. Lamy Safari with a broad. And this is J. Arbonne Amethyst de Laurel. I don't know how to spell it. I always usually look at something. Okay. And we'll just do a little squigglies. Because sometimes that's when we see what's going to happen. Okay, there's that one. And then, um, well, let's get that Twisby Go out. <clears throat> it's got a medium nib. Twisby Go with a medium. And... It has uh, Birmingham. Uh, well, I'm going to abbreviate because it's a long name. Knox. Old Glory. Blue ink in it. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, that's a couple of good ones. Uh, I, th I mean, I feel like that's good. But I did bring out some other things. I wanted to actually get radical and do what I did in my Exceed notebook and just uh, paint in a little bit of um, fountain pen ink because that's how I do it when I'm testing them for me. So, oh, goodness, okay. I'm going to do it a couple times because, I don't know, that first one, hmm, I don't know. Maybe the paintbrush was wet. Okay, hopefully not. I... Usually, yeah, well, I dried that off. I dried it off right here on this piece of paper towel. So <laughs> I don't want to have an unfair test for the poor notebook. I love this notebook. Okay, let's grab um, a couple of things I use in my bullet journal. One is a precise, Pilot Precise V5. 
not everybody probably who's watching this is fountain pen only. <clears throat> Actually, I tried to find my 7 because the 7 is a little bit uh, more aggressive ink-wise. But I do have an aggressive non-fountain pen ink, and that is the Uniball Vision Elite. These bleed through a lot of stuff, so, it, you know, we'll see. So this is um, Uniball. Vision Elite. This is a little nerve-wracking since I don't really, I don't know what's going to happen. <clears throat> I do remember that the Exceed notebook, and I know they make it in this size, was pretty hardy. So we know we have options. Okay, this is a Paper Mate Flare. I use these a lot in my uh, bullet journal. <clears throat> Paper Mate Flare. Uh, medium, okay. I do, these are usually pretty well behaved, so I doubt that's going to bleed through. And uh, really, same with Tombow's, but I'll go ahead and brush some Tombow on anyway, up here. <clears throat> and then get the other end of it. Just, just This is just a quick test. Uh, may not be totally comprehensive, but it should show us what's going on with the paper. Tombow, um, well, it's dual brush. <clears throat> dual brush marker <laughs> six seven nine color six seven nine okay I chose it because it was one of the darker colors okay I got room for maybe one more thing I don't I don't really oh yeah I wanted to see how my uh, pilot dr. grip uh, ballpoint pen wrote in it just because I do like sometimes uh, don't be shocked to write with this I really do Especially if I'm going to draw and then draw over it. So, Dr. Grip. That's more for how it feels and how it ends up looking. I wasn't sure how it would be. So, I know it's not going to bleed through. Um, pilot. And it's full black. That's very smooth. Um, I think... Let's see, I usually do cursive, so. Okay. All right, I think that's enough. It's like watching molasses drip, probably, but. All right, so now it's time to turn it over and see. I usually have blotter paper all over, but of course, well, I got a big one, but just in case we had. Oh, well, that's interesting. Okay, that's perfectly good. We have bleed through on looks like the second really heavily painted on well that doesn't matter because all of the writing is good um with the stub i can see one place there where maybe it wanted to bleed through hmm. this paper has white on the back and huh well that's interesting. I wonder I feel it if it's the same even. It may not be the same. Oh dear. Okay. Let's try this one then. Well, shoot, I didn't want to make this five hundred years long. Okay, we'll go straight for the one that we know could bleed through, the most likely, which is and the stub nib. Um, yeah, because the paper here might be slightly different. The other one had blank on the back. Retro. 51, 1.1 millimeter stub, Roar and Klinger Casia. Okay. All right. I, I don't think we need to go too far, but I will try that Uniball. Because <clears throat> that's the other one that, you know. Uniball Vision Elite. I like these pens. I'm still using them up from my non-fountain pen days. But I've had several notebooks where they just blast right through the paper. It's no fun. Okay. Okay, so with that, I don't see anything trying to bleed through, but it could be about the same. It's just hard for me to know since I did discover that the back of that page is not lined. You know, the who knows. So I thought we'd try another. Okay. 
So let's see what else there is to talk about here. Um, that's a pretty good look. I mean, it's 100 GSM paper. It seems really nice and smooth. I think that the writing looks good. Like, I don't see feathering with that stub either. I really don't. And that's a, an aggressive... <laughs> that puts out a lot of ink. And I know Roar and Klinger Acacia is a well-behaved ink. Um, when I used the ink that came in some little cartridges, this one bled, this pen bled through just about everything I wrote on. It was, it was amazing. But so Casia is much better behaved ink than the Monteverde one that I was using. Sherat, I think, which was so dark and it bled through. So, but that's a pretty good sampling of what we could expect paper-wise. I love the fact that there's so many choices, you know, that you can get these in, um, you know, dot grid lined. You can get the B6, B5 size, the full bullet journal size. Um, they have an earth collection, a wildlife collection. It's pretty cool. I mean, I'm a, I'm a notebook addict and fiend, so this is just <laughs> really a lot of fun for me. Um, uh, and dangerous for my wallet, should I venture into their website again. But uh, So there you have it. I, I hope I've covered everything, but whatever I didn't cover, I believe will be you can find out by going to the um, websites that I will go ahead and um, link for you. I'm so distracted playing with this thing that I can hardly stay on task here. That's a nice pen holder. I, I truly like that, and I like how it does this too. Um, very nice. I, I saw the purple hippo one was sold out currently in this size, but they had the A5 size. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, the person only asked for, you know, just a brief peek, and I think I went overboard. But you can put any questions you have that I might be able to answer in the comments. And also, I'll do my best to link whatever I can find that might be helpful to you. So thank you very much for watching. And if you like videos like this about fountain pens and notebooks and, and uh, spending money on uh, <laughs> paper, notebooks, ink, all that kind of stuff, uh, feel free to subscribe and, and uh, comment. I, I love to answer comments and we have nice conversations here. So thank you and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.